If you're not learning, you're not growing. We have to make sure that we're improving as time changes, not just changing with time, but improving with time. The most right. beautiful thing is that once you learn that knowledge, you're going to pass that knowledge on to somebody else. So it kind of becomes like a legacy where you keep giving, giving, giving on a bigger way that is not money, but it's on a learning way where you're helping out people become successful. Welcome to Be Bold Branding where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Are you thinking about finding that perfect mentor or maybe becoming one? Our guest today, Edwin Carrion, calls himself a God-made millionaire. And we definitely want to learn more about that. He's a mentor to other entrepreneurs and shares his experience and knowledge to help them get off the ground and achieve their goals through education and mentorship. He has built, developed, or sold over $30 million worth of real estate. He's going to share his story with us today and how his personal brand helped him to become known in his space. And now we'd like to welcome Edwin to the Be Bold Branding Podcast. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. And to everyone listening, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever part of the world you're in, and welcome to the show. All right, Edwin, we're excited about this. I, you know, before we get on a podcast with somebody, we we do our research and we look up, you know, their accomplishments in life and things like that, of which you have a stellar, stellar resume. Uh, United States Marine Corps, specialized training with FBI, CIA, Department of uh, States. Uh, one of a few Marines uh, recommended to guard the American embassy in Moscow, Russia. Unbelievable. Contributed to the security for President Bill Clinton, when he visited Moscow, uh, first off, thank you so much for your service, sir. Yes. That's first and foremost. Thank you for that. And, you did an amazing research on me. I love that. Yeah. And one of the things that jumped out about us that we really loved is you claim to be a God-made millionaire. Do you want to expand on that for us? Yes. Let me start with that. And number one, the reason I call myself a God-made millionaire is because I have to give the glory to God of being where I am today and for all the things that I have in my life, whether it's financial relationship, my family, everything around my life is because I give, you know, the praise to the almighty God, which is my belief. You know, my belief, I believe in God and, and I respect everyone's beliefs. But the most important thing that I always preach to everyone is that having a belief is one of the, one of the secrets of always being successful in life and business. And, you know, we can't do anything on our own. So there's always a lot of people that support us to get to the top. And I used to call myself before a self-made millionaire to realize that I wasn't self-made. I didn't make myself a millionaire because it was a lot of people that helped me along the journey to become successful, not only in financially, but in relationships and in all aspects of my life. So that's why I'm called a God-made millionaire. I love it. I've never heard it before. I love it. I agree with it 1,000%. Uh, we're believers ourselves, um, and you know, I recognized the same thing years ago in my career. Um, it, there were so many doors open up um, to give you opportunities that you really are prepared for, but you didn't do anything to open those doors. And uh, that has that glory has to get be given to God because He's the one that opens those opportunities. Uh, sometimes, yes. whether we recognize it or not, I have the same belief, and uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, well, you got great energy, Edwin. I love that too. Um, we, you know, one of the things that we like to start off with in our podcast is asking people their why, their story, a little bit behind how they got to where they are. Uh, so, was there a specific event or person in your life that shaped who you are that you would put at that pinnacle place that helped you to get there and resulted in what you're doing? Uh, yes, and another one one specific person because there had there has been many people along my journey, but the main one that I attribute to all of this is my mother. Being raised by a single mother and coming from Ecuador, uh, another third world country, and coming from a very humble beginnings is what gave me the drive because she set an example for me as what becoming a hard worker means, what trying to achieve your dreams means. And her struggling with two kids throughout her life and always working hard to put us and open our eyes to a lot of opportunities to show us that there's abundance in this world. That's what gave me that drive and that push to become very successful. But 
very successful financially wise, meaning that because we didn't have much growing up, that was her main focus. And I realized that that's not what it's all about. Expound upon that, will you? Because when you said that's not what it's all about, of course, we, you know, at, at the top of our minds, we know that, right? But tell us what that means to you and your story. Yes, to, to me, it means that, and that's why I call myself a gap made millionaire, because being a millionaire doesn't mean that I have millions in my bank account. That It means that I'm a millionaire in all aspects of my life. And when I mean all aspects of my life, financially, relationship-wise, family-wise, and friendship-wise, you know, and also within myself, because before I can make anybody happy, before I could take care of anybody, I have to make sure that I am happy within myself and I believe in myself and I have that self-confidence that nobody could ever take that away from me, right? So growing up, yes, because we were poor growing up, my mother, she wanted to give us everything that we wanted in our lives. Just like as when we're parents, that's what we want to do. We want to give our kids the things that we never had, correct? Do you guys agree? I agree. Exactly. 100%. So, so we tend to focus on those material things and we forget about everything else. And with my mother example, her was always work, work, work all the time that if I could remember experiences with her, there are very little moments that I remember that we shared together as far as having good experiences because she was so consuming to the work and trying to raise two kids on her own and working hard that we didn't get to spend quality time together as much as any kid would love to. Because if you ask your kids nowadays, yes, they want the Nintendo, they want this, they want that. But at the end of the day, what they really want is they want your time, they want your attention. And that doesn't cost a thing. And we tend to forget that. And we're so focused into one thing that once we achieve that financial success, it doesn't make us happy because then we look back and we're like, oh my God, I lost so much time. And I lost all this time with my kids, with my friends, with my family, with my significant other. Agreed. That is a challenge that so many entrepreneurs face. It, it's it's a story that I think you hear everywhere, but what I would love to know is, you know, your mom played a part in that, obviously, because you saw that how hard she had to work, but she also missed out on life. But, you know, when you got to the Marines, it was a totally different life, right? So what did that teach you about how to operate businesses too? Um, and the Marines, I got reinforce a couple of things and, and, and people always ask me what are your takeaways from the marine corps and my main takeaways from the marines are that i got really instilled honor courage and commitment honor i had because my mom taught me to be an, honor, an honorable man to be a person of honor to be a person of my word so that has been along with me but being in the military being in the marines that is their core value their core values are honor courage and commitment so that reinforced my honor in me and into everything that i do in my life incur the courage that no matter what, we have to keep putting, moving forward, we adapt and overcome to whatever situation comes to our way, whether it's in business, whether it's personal. And the last one, which, which is the commitment, commit to one thing. And nowadays, a lot of people do not commit to things. They don't commit to their business. They want to start a business, but when things get tough, what do they do? They walk away and they look for something better. They have a plan B. So that is not commitment. When they get into a relationship, into a marriage, two, three years down the road, things get tough, they walk away. Why? Because it's the easy thing to do. So what I learned is that commitment. I've been married for 12 years, thank God, and it's tough. There's been times where, you know, you want to walk away, but that commitment is what keeps me pushing forward. That commitment of being a good father, even though I don't know what being a father is because I was never raised with a father, it's what keeps me pushing forward to try to be the best father that I am, the best role model so when my daughters grow up, they could look for a man that is a, a, almost like me. And those values are set so high that they are going to pick the right man, that I'm not going to be worried. Are they going to find the right man? Are they not going to find the person who's going to teach them, treat them right? Because I'm doing that for them and I'm stealing those values in them of what a man is supposed to be to a woman. And in business, the same thing, that commitment that no matter how tough things get, that I got to keep pushing forward because the vision that I had at the beginning when I started that business is going to fulfill. But as long as I always keep all my values in line, as long as I always keep my priorities in place, everything, God is going to provide everything that I want in my life. And it has been like that. 
Yeah, that's uh, those are really good takeaways for the listeners, uh, because, going, you know, going back to the commitment thing, it's very important. You know, we teach personal branding and the power of personal branding in every aspect of your business life, but also in your personal life, too. And, and one of the things that we really try to drive home with people is committing to that brand, you know, b- because it is going to bring you business. It's going to work for you 24 hours when you're sleeping, when you're spending time with your family, when you are balancing the rest of your life uh, as you should, as you absolutely have to, then that brand is still out there working. But you have to commit to that brand uh, and you have to get out there and use it every way possible. So I definitely think commitment is something that uh, entrepreneurs tend to, like you said, they tend to give up easy. They just, you know, there's always going to be business struggles and obstacles every day. Always there's going to be some kind of thing you've got to overcome and and you got to stay committed to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and in terms of you know mentorship, Edwin, that's one of your desires. And you you know have become a mentor to younger entrepreneurs or up and coming, most especially real estate developers. Yeah. Tell us first of all, how did you get started in the real estate end of things? And then second of all, you know why mentorship? Why was that very important to you? So. I mean, my story is how to get started into real estate development is very long, so I'll make a long story short, like the, the saying goes, right? I uh, wanted to get out of the Marine Corps. I was about to leave the Marine Corps, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. As a 22-year-old, we have plenty of ideas, and I was, I was blessed that I was surrounded by so many options, and I wanted to go into the federal government. But in order for me to do that, I needed to get a college degree. So I decided to leave the Marine Corps, go to college, and get my degree so I could come back to it. But prior to me getting out, my number one fan, my mother again, came to me and she said, you should become a developer. I'm like, what is that? I had no idea what a developer was. I thought it was like a like a code developer or something like that because at that time it was getting big. But then she explained to me and I became a real estate developer. And that's how I started in real estate. But the main reason I wanted to become a mentor uh, is two reasons. Number one, prior to me becoming a developer, I reached out to this nonprofit organization and they assigned me a mentor and that mentor was the most negative person you could think of oh my (laughs) at the end of the day told me don't become a developer because it's too tough so i'm like you know i don't want this in my life like i want somebody that's going to tell me and it's going to help me and push me right so i decided and i and i said to myself edwin when you become successful you're going to give back and that's one of the ways you're going to do it but number two is a God-given calling that I got because if I have a lot of money and I give you $10,000 right now, you go and spend those $10,000 and it's gone, right? That's it. The value is gone. You maybe bought something that you wanted. Maybe you took care of something that you wanted. Maybe you started your business. But if I give you the knowledge to become successful, nobody, and I mean nobody, could ever take that away from you. And the most beautiful thing is that once you learn that knowledge, you're going to pass that knowledge on to somebody else. So it kind of becomes like a legacy where you keep giving, giving, giving on a bigger way that is not money, but it's on a learning way where you're helping out people become successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what a beautiful story. It really is. And and it's you can clearly say it's like I would be able to tell that you are a successful individual whether you, whether I knew the success that you had already had just solely by that willingness to give back. I I feel like the most successful people that I know are all think that way. Um, you know, they all are willing to take the knowledge that they have and give it to somebody who's desiring to get that knowledge from them and uh, or from anybody. So um, that's one. Would you let me ask you this? Would you call that part of your peak performance secrets? Is that that? Let's talk about that for a second, because that's a real big one for you um, in 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 your uh, organization. Right. But peak performance secrets. Is there a parlay to that? Um, on a way, yes, it is. And, and, and number one, it is that everybody in my company, one of our values is that if you're not learning, you're not growing. So it's constant self-growth, constant learning, because we bring, and when I mean we, I think everybody in this world brings a lot of limiting beliefs from my childhood. If we really mm-hmm. think back, even though we might not want to believe it, and something I just realized on a podcast that I did a couple of weeks ago was that I was abused as a kid. And when I mean abuse, meaning that 
my parents, my mom, growing up, she used to hit me with the ironing board cable, with a broomstick, you know, with a broomstick and, and all these kind of things that now that I think if I do that to my kids, that is child abuse. So I was abused in a way. So we learn from that and we have to make sure that we understand what happens to us when we were kids and in order to fix that and take care of that so we can continue growing in life and as a person. Mm -hmm. That's another takeaway to personal branding mm -hmm. that we talk about in our program. Uh, you know, the what what did you go through in life to get you to where you are right now? And it all has something to do with it, right? It, even negativity like abuse and things like that, a person like yourself, right? Uh, what, what, one of Tanya's, uh, I forget who said it, uh, you know, when you know better, was that Maya Angelou? Uh, when Maya you, Angelou. Yeah, Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of times abuse comes from people that didn't know any better at the time. And then you realize, I don't want to, I don't want to do that to my kids. I want to sort of stop this cycle right now. And then you stop that. And then there's growth from that and it moves forward, but it's still part of what shaped you into being the incredible human being that you are and be able to accomplish the things that you've accomplished. Um, yes. But you put and that. And it's, becoming a, yes. and it's becoming aware and embracing who we are because even though yeah. that's a negative part of my life, I embrace that. That's who yeah. it made me today, right? So it's embracing all the things. Like I used to hate when, um, and I remember in 2000, in 2000, there was a Marine in the embassy in Moscow that he called me, oh, you're um, jack of all trades, master and none. And for many years that hurt me. Like every time I heard that, I'm mm -hmm. like that, that comment to me, like it used to bother me. Now I embrace it. I love that. I love that I'm the jack of all trades, that I know how to, you know, set up, a, create a website that I know how to build a house, that I know how to drive a, trans a truck, an 18-wheeler. I know that I'm a jack of all trades and I don't have to be the master or not because I have masters within me, within my team that help me be become better. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Well said, too. <laughs> you have masters yeah. inside your team because that's also a huge takeaway, right? Mm -hmm. We can't be everything, uh, you know, and a CEO, uh, I have found as I grew into that space and I've interviewed other CEOs that have grown into that space, we, that is exactly the mentality it takes because you have to know something, at least a little bit of something of every part, parcel and moving part of your business, but you can't master them all. You, you're the bird's eye, right? You're looking and saying, hey, here's a small problem. Find the person to fix that problem here. And you have enough of knowledge about each one of those sectors that you can piece that together. So in looking back at your life and seeing that, that is such a positive takeaway, you know, that you were not necessarily an expert just in one thing, because if you did that, you couldn't be the CEO. You got to be able to to spread yourself thin and let the masters handle what they're there for. I, I love that takeaway. Yeah, I do too. And you know, you mentioned that your first mentor was a terrible mentor, which I think is hilarious because that's often how a lot of people get started in their business or they have a, they just have a bad experience and they think, gosh, I can do better than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have a mentor today that you, that, that you work with or that you look up to? Oh yes, I have a lot of mentors. I have my 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 pastor, which he's my mentor, and and I look up to him because how amazing he is. And and when you look at a church in two different ways, when you look at him, of how much value he gives to everybody, how he inspires everybody, but also how he's able to grow this church. And and at the, if I look at it from the business side, it is a business because they have to grow, they have to sustain it, they have to maintain it, right? So that's number one. Number two, I have. Uh, friends that are my mentors in a relationship, uh, people that I, they've been married for 30, 40 years, and that's where I want to get to. So I have mentors in all aspects of my life. I have my mentor in speaking, in, in doing what I want to do right now, which is become a public speaker and mentor, continue mentoring more people and teaching more people how to talk to them, how to find out. I have my wife. She's one of my biggest mentors because she always gives me therapy on a daily basis, and she tells me, how to become a better father, how to become a better husband, how to become a better person, how to give more because I have always been so much into business that I need to learn how to have that balance in my life. And she's created such a good balance in my life. And again, uh, my business mentors, I have a lot of very good business mentors that continuously help my mind and open my mind of, do I continue growing? Do I continue scaling? Do I stop? Am I okay with that? And get out of your comfort zone, move on to the next level. And to me, 
I love that now, nowadays we have that opportunity of reaching out to so many mentors, to finding great mentors, because back then, to me, there wasn't, we didn't have social media, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have all these things that we have now. So I was very limited to the mentors that I could receive. But the mm -hmm. only thing that I learned too, that nowadays, because of all these things, all this access that we have, there's a lot of people that are just becoming mentors without having the experience. So it's like like when, when I told you at the beginning, thank you for doing all that research on me because you did do your due diligence on me. There's a lot of people that don't do their due diligence on their mentors. And they become disappointed because they spend all this money in them and the mentors don't invest with them. And to me, one of the things that I wanted to change on the mentorship side is that whenever I have a student come with me on the real estate development, once they go through my training, I invest my own money with them. Why? Because I believe in what I teach. If I take a, a, a mentor student in and, and their business and I help them scale their business and I know they're going to do, they're going to do everything that they need to do. I invest my money with them and their business to help them scale and help them grow their business and to help them sell this business because at the end of the day, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for them because they're growing their company. They're doing what they want to do. They're changing their life. And it's a win for me because I'm changing their lives, but I'm also gaining financially once the business sells and once they become very successful. Yes. You live, you're, you're walking to walk and talking to talk. I like it. Right. Yeah. And investing yeah. in your students and your, you know, as a, as a mentor, Makes, it's fantastic. It's a perfect business model. I, I'm in the real estate business too. I, I'm a broker and uh, I do the same thing with my agents. I, uh, we, we, uh, we're a boutique brokerage because I, you know, I could go out here and do a puppy mill and just try to get a bunch of people with licenses, but that's not really what I want. I want very successful agents. And so we're very picky about that. But then I come along beside them in the same way and invest in their business and their advertising for them and their branding and their personal brand, because I know that, that if they're business grows, they take me along with them. And, and plus, you know, I'm like you, I just like to see people successful. I just, yes. I do. It, it really yeah. excites me. You know, when I see people good at what they're doing and then want to give that back, it's fantastic. Yes. Uh, Cause I wish the whole world was that way. I really do. Uh, I think it'd be a heaven on earth if we could already have that mentality. Um, unfortunately, it's not always that way in every sector, you know, so <laughs> you and I, and then we make another one. Little by little, the world starts becoming that way because unfortunately we have become very separated. And yes. if we continue doing our part and not giving up our values, more people are going to change and are going to become like that. I believe that too. I do. And so what are our program? We like to ask five uh, questions about your personal brand. Very important questions about that. So we're, we're putting you on the hot seat here. We do it Jay Leno style. We'll go down five, four, three, two, one to what we think is the most important. So if you're ready, we'd like to do that now. Let's go. All right. Always ready, right? All right. Number five in your business, who do you serve? Who would you say are your ideal customers? My ideal customers are the ones that share my values and my beliefs. Those are my ideal customers. Perfect. All right. Perfect. All right. Number four, how do you serve them? Exactly how? I serve them by providing value, always building the relationship and not worried about the business. Because to me, the most important thing is creating those long lasting relationships. Very good answer. Number three, what qualifies you to serve them? What qualify all the struggles and all the craziness that I've been through in my life. I think that's what qualifies me, that I'm there to provide the value to help him not make the same mistakes versus just trying to go for that one extra dollar. Love it. Mm -hmm. Number two, how does it make their life better? On the mentoring side, it makes their life better because I'm helping them live life to the fullest. I want everyone to live my life, live life to the fullest, meaning having a balanced life and being a millionaire in all aspects of their lives. Beautiful. Number one question, what sets you apart from others that do the same thing in your industry? I believe in what I teach and I walk the walk. Like you said, I'm not a guru that is renting a car, renting a house to put that on social media. What I have is what I have. And I'm not afraid of showing my lifestyle because my lifestyle is my lifestyle. It's not to show off, but it's so people see that they also could have the lifestyle that they could live their life to the fullest and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. So if I'm going to teach you, I'm willing to invest in you because I know what I teach is going to help you succeed. 
That Fantastic. Great answers. Great yes. answers. So, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Not rehearsed. Just for the, for, for the fact that we're not rehearsed. <laughs> That was totally off the cuff. Right off the cuff. But that's good. That's what we want. We love that. So what is one message that you would like to leave our listeners with today when it comes to their personal brand? Uh, be who you are. Be authentic. Don't try to be who you're not. And I think authenticity wins everything else in life. People are going to like you. And the ones that don't like you, they're not for you. The ones that do like you is because you aspire them and you inspire them to want to be surrounded by you. Yeah, probably the best answer I've heard of that. That's, yes. a, that's really good. And it's it's true. We believe the same thing. Authenticity rules the day. Always, always, always. And, you know, going back to your, your, the answer that you made on the on the first question, what separates you? You know, we teach that, too. It, no competition. Like you, we don't have competition really as human beings. We're all equal. We're all the same, right? We all have the same emotions and we have the same, uh, we don't always have equal opportunities, but we have the same opportunity every morning to, to make the best out of that day uh, yes. possible. And if you continue to do that, then every day will be a building block upon the other. And one of the things that I think that we mess up, I did early on in my career was comparing myself to other people that did the same thing. I did. And like you said, you're not the guy that's going to have the Lamborghini out here, even though you could probably buy several Lamborghinis, right? But it's not who you are. That's not what you want to portray. You're portraying exactly who you are and you do attract those people. And those people are in abundance. There's 7 billion people, 8 billion people on earth. You have your flock in abundance when you live authentic like that. So uh, that we definitely agree a hundred percent. Yeah, and the Bible said, you know, don't compare yourself to, to somebody else because we're all created equal. It's, you could compare material things, but not to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, Edwin, tell uh, prospects how they can reach you if they have questions or if they want to work with you. Yes, uh, you can reach me on my social media channels. Uh, all my social media channels are my name, Edwin Carrion 78 uh, Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok because I have to post there because of my brand manager. So uh, <laughs> find me there. But one of the things that I like that my mentor taught me is to tell everyone to become ask calls. Meaning that if you need something, if you want something, ask. Do not be afraid to ask because again, we're all created equal. So if you have a question, if you need help with something, I'm more than willing to help out. And the other one is I invite everyone to join me on my Startup to Millions Facebook group, where I share my free ebook of my nine secrets of how to become, how to live a balanced and successful life. Uh, All right. We encourage you guys go there. Absolutely. <laughs> Get that <laughs> because, because this guy has done it. Edwin, it has been such a pleasure to talk with you today. And I wish we had a lot more time, but Thank you for coming on the show. Congratulations on all your fantastic accomplishments and wishing you all the best in continuing to be a fantastic mentor. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. And to everyone listening, time changes, but, and we have to make sure that we're improving as time changes, not just changing with time, but improving with time. Great takeaway. Great exit advice. Great I exit love it. advice. I love <laughs> it. Y'all go check out Edwin Carry On. Uh, he's, uh, as you could tell, he's fantastic. Uh, subscribe to us so we can bring you more and more people like this and give you good value on direction in your life, personal branding. I could not agree more. Um, the balanced life is the key. And if you can get your all of your facets of your life in balance, then you're going to live that millionaire life that uh, Edwin talks about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, subscribe, hit that subscribe button and we'll bring you more people. We'll have Edwin back on also. All right. Hey, listen, guys, when we talk to you about this, just like he's talking about, we're talking about prosperity. But when we talk about prosperity at Brandface, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the, the true 360 of an abundant life that we want for all of y'all. We know at Brandface that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be bold, oh. folks, especially with your brand. And go check out Edwin. And thank you, Ms. Tanya. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time on Be Bold Branding. Brought to you by Brandface, the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.